is Supernaturally, and today I have my good friend, Pastor Tafara Butai with me. Why don't you tell us, before I give him a formal introduction, why don't you tell us where you're watching from, give us a shout out, or let us know where you're watching from, we'll give you a shout out, and find out where who's watching here. So give us your name, and well, we see your name, give us your uh, town where you're watching from, maybe if you have a business, or if you have, if you have a, a certain ministry or business, put that in there as well, and we'll give you a shout, I'm going to try and pull the videos up here. So good to see you, sorry I couldn't make last week. But um, I'm so excited about this week because I have Tafara Butai with me and um, he's going to be a super blessing. He's going to bring a great teaching from the Word of God, praise the Lord. So this is, I know you haven't been notified. We never sent out an email or anything. So this is a little bit of a spontaneous live, but glad you're joining us. We, we, we're live on un, our underground network, which right now we have lots of people on our underground network and I'm also live on Facebook and YouTube. So welcome, welcome. We've got a great word for you today. We're talking about business supernaturally today. That's the subject today is business supernaturally, how to do business supernaturally. We've been filming TV all day, haven't we, Tafara? Yeah. We've been doing TV. We made three TV programs this morning. We've been filming TV all day. We've had a great day. And I said, Tafara, you know what? You still, you don't look completely worn out yet. There's a little bit of energy left. Let's go live on Facebook. So Tafara was uh, uh, gracious enough to go live. So Sarah from Grapevine, Texas. Hi, Sarah. We have um, Amy and Ben and Mark's on. Hi, Mark's on. Mark last night on boot camp. We have Christina on. Praise the Lord. We have uh, Cheryl. We have uh, Cheryl from Alafi, Kansas. Alafi, come on. Alafi, Kansas. Pastor Max Cornell out there. He's in Shawnee, which is just down the road from Alafi. Um, Turid's on here. Hi, Turid from California. Uh, Praveen's on here from India. Hi, Praveen. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up on uh, on YouTube. And don't forget to press share on Facebook. There's people that need to hear this. Maybe you're watching afterwards. Hi, Chandler. Great to see you. Um, there's people that need to see this. So, you know, there's people on your Facebook wall that you may not have spoken to for 20 years. Yeah. Hit the share button and they can find out about this. We also have our underground network running as well at the same time. So we're, we're live on three different platforms, praise the Lord. Hi, Angie from Kansas. Uh, so we are so blessed, amen. So today, I'm very excited to have my good friend, Pastor Tafara Butai, I've been friends many years. And Tafara and his wife, Chipo, actually run our Africa ministry. So if you didn't know, Teradis Ministries actually has an African office that services the whole continent of Africa. We have daily television with TV in Africa every single day of the week, five days a week on a good time. We play the Abundant Life program and then also on once a week on Daystar in Africa. Hi, Linda. Watching from uh, Pretoria, Pretoria South, Africa. South Africa. Come on. Mike Beck, uh, Mark Beck is in Indianapolis. Saw him last night. So... Um, we are, we're on TBM, we're on Day Start in Africa, and in order for us to do that, we have uh, Pastors Chipo and Tafara running our African office. Uh, Tafara's been on the board of directors from day one, and they do such a great job. We're so blessed. They're the senior pastors and founders of Faith Hill Church. Faith Hill Church, Johannesburg, and then also at Durban, there's a campus. Faith Hill Church is a spirit-filled, faith-filled, grace-filled uh, church. You don't want to miss it. If you haven't got a church, check out Faithfield Church. And if you want to watch online, you can watch online at faithfieldchurch.co.za. .za. We say Z-A, none of yeah. this Z, that's American. Yeah, we it, say Z. Z, yep. Queen's English. That's how you say it. Queen, Z. Z. Z, it's Z. Listen, we are both speaking the Queen's English today, so we're not going to speak American, we're going to speak in the Queen English. Praise the Lord. Uh, Ronald Lee says, great, wonderful seeing you guys together from... Uh, Still Bay? Still Bay, South Still Africa. Bay. Still Bay, South Africa. I've never uh, spelt it like that. Someone else from Pretoria. Actually, Nina. When, you, when you and Carly come out, we're going to be next to Steel Bay. We're, we're going to be Steel Bay. Nice now. Nice now. Nice now, yeah. So we please just added come that. out for now. We just added that to our um, Africa tour. We're now going to Johannesburg, Nazba. Nizna. Nizna, which is south of, of Cape Town, right? North. Yeah, north. North, north of Cape Town. Mm. And then we're going to Durban, Durban, and then we're going to Zimbabwe. Harare, so that's Zimbabwe. Our little, Harare, Zimbabwe. That's like our little uh, African tour, if you like. Praise the Lord. So this is great to see everyone here. Um, uh, SG on YouTube says that they loved your segment on on uh, Power Academy. You know, Tafara has a course on Power Academy. If you want to learn any more, we're only going to teach for a few minutes here, but he has a whole course on Power Academy called Grace in the Marketplace. And he has his book on audio. We have this on uh, USB, audio USB. This is Grace in the Marketplace. This is one of the best books on finances. It especially covers how you could be uh, have innovation in the marketplace. It talks about giving and receiving. Grace in the Marketplace. Get your copy. Go to the Terridays Ministry Store. Pick up your copy of Grace in the Marketplace. This is the audio version of the book. Yeah. They'll be very blessed. It's actually a this. teaching. It's that a teaching. It complements the book. Oh, yeah. it goes with the book. Okay. Yeah. I've been telling everyone this is the audio version of the book. It's not. <laughs> it's, a, it's the Grace in the Marketplace teaching. How long is it, do you know? It's about USB. five. 
Five, five lessons. Songs? That five lessons right yeah. here. Grace in the marketplace. This goes very well with the book. You can still get the book on Amazon, right? Yeah, you can. Pastor Tafara Butai. Check it out on Amazon. You can get the book. But here is the teaching. You can get this in our store. We actually stock this in our store right now. So go ahead and grab that. Praise the Lord. So we are so blessed that you've all joined us. JJ Farmer's on here. We've got um, uh, we've got Stacy's on here. Stephanie's on here from Arizona. Byron's on here. Praise the Lord. We've got a whole gang on here. So I know you wasn't notified. This is just an impromptu live. That's why you have to click subscribe on YouTube and click the little notification bell so you can get notified when we go live. And also, if you want to, you can join our underground network, which uh, the camera's hunting. It has an autofocus on this camera. So unfortunately, the camera on our underground hunts. We've got to fix that. But if you can stay with us on underground, you'll be blessed to be on underground as well. Praise the Lord. So Tafara, you really have a revelation. The first thing I want to say is thank you for all, all your service to Teradiz Ministries. If it wasn't for Pastor Tafara and his wife, Chipo, we would not have a Teradiz Ministries Africa. Just simple as that. Um, they are helping us with our territory in Africa. They're such a blessing. But thank you for your service to the body of Christ so far. And, and you, what's fascinating about you is you have these books, you know, Grace in the Marketplace, and you have a great revelation on prosperity and God's prosperity. In fact, we've, we've just uh, been um, uh, making television for Daystar and for TBN this morning in the studio. And one of the subjects we covered was prosperity. And I just want to tell you that um, it's amazing that you have a... Uh, such a revelation on prosperity, and you're not American or English. You didn't grow up in a prosperous nation. Right. In fact, you're from Zimbabwe, right? Yeah. Which is some research, you know, it depends how you measure it, but some uh, statistics show Zimbabwe is the second poorest nation in the world. Yeah. It depends how you measure it. So it's a very poor nation. You yeah. grew up in poverty, and we're not talking about the poverty like you couldn't afford to put gas in your second SUV. Yeah. You couldn't, you know, you only had an iPhone 6 instead of an iPhone 13. We're talking about real poverty, right? Yeah. How, what was it like growing up in Zimbabwe? Um, so, like you rightfully put it, I mean, first of all, thank you for having me. It's, oh man, I'm blessed. It's a real treat. It's We're a real blessed. privilege to be here, and um, and and man, uh, Chip and I are, are, are blessed to be a part of what you guys are doing on thank the you. continent of Africa. It's huge, and we just love being a part of it. And uh, yeah, like you rightfully put it, grew up in in Zimbabwe mm -hmm. within the small country of Zimbabwe. I grew up in a small town called Kwekwe. Mm -hmm. And uh, within that, I grew up in a small neighborhood called Mbizo. And the name of our neighborhood, you know, you won't believe this, but this is the truth. The name of our neighborhood was Section 5. You know, talk about being a statistic. They didn't take time They didn't even out. give you a name. They didn't they even didn't give us name. a name. They just said, you know, these ones, Section 5, there mm -hmm. was Section 1, Section 2, Section 3, and we were uh, district, district 5. Yeah. And uh, so it wasn't like you, you know, you put it, it was it was. Poverty was mm. evident everywhere in our family, too. I grew up in a three-room shack, three-roomed mm. house. Grew up sleeping under the kitchen table. And, um, you didn't man, have your own bedroom, I right? didn't. Oh, bedroom? I didn't have. That was a dream. So you, you slept know? in the kitchen under the table. Under the it. table. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, no one ever taught me what we're going to be talking about today, that okay. God is a plan. Don't you, you wish know? they had? I wish. I, and I was in church. I was in yeah. church for a long time. I was in church uh, for probably 52 times in a year. And you never at, heard this. At least. And you never and heard I'd this. I listen to the preachers preach and they never mentioned this, that yeah. God had a plan uh, for me to to prosper. And so, yeah, that's that's what we're going to be talking wow. about. That's and, awesome. Well, I'm yeah. so excited that you're here to share. I want to remind you that if you have questions, please go ahead and put them in the comments right now. And um, you can you can actually, um, someone from, uh, another person from Faithful, I get distracted by the comments. Right, right. Another one from Faithful is on here from uh, Faithful Church, another one of your congregants. You better behave yourself, Pastor DeFaro, because your congregants They're are watching. watching you. But I was going to tell you that we will spend a little bit of time at the end to answer your questions. And make sure you put your questions in the comments, Facebook, YouTube, and Underground. Put your questions in the comments. My team will feed me the questions to my iPad. And uh, we're also going to pray for you, and there's going to be an impartation of a supernatural increase. I believe that there's going to be grace for you in the marketplace when we pray for you. Remember, this is a business live, so we're going to be talking mainly about business and finances. Praise God. So remember to ask your question. I want to read one quick testimony out before we let Tafara teach. And this is from uh, Pamela says, on Underground, she, she wrote this testimony on our Underground Network. That's our own Teradez Ministries Network. You can join that by going to teradez.com forward slash underground. Pamela says, hi, I just, got word, I just got word that I can go back to work again after a long time off. 
Praise God. She, wow. And she's sowing a seed to tear these ministries. Come I believe on. when you sow seed, it opens up doors for you in other areas. So thank you for sowing, Pamela. We appreciate that. If you're interested, by the way, um, in uh, in what's happening with Terry Dismissions Ministries and our property, we're up to 700. Let me get you the exact. I'll get you the exact figure on here. We're up to 729,256 yeah. dollars. Thank you so much. We purchased the building for cash. We are free and clear. We yes. actually own the building. We're on the deed now. Terry Dismissions Ministries owns the property, and now we just need that extra money to come in to be able to finish the build out. So we have 1.1. We need total. So uh, 729. I mean, that's not far off. We're, what's that? That's like 300. And, that's like, like 370 thousand dollars away from from having it all done, having all the construction done. They're right. actually doing the construction now, and we're paying as we go. So as the money comes in, we're paying for the construction and the rehab, and it's looking absolutely beautiful. They're doing a great job. Pastor DeFar was out there yeah. on Thursday, didn't it? Look great. It yeah, looks beautiful. It looks great. And it's such a great place. So thank you for donating towards the property. You can do that. You can go to teradez.com forward slash HQ, HQ for headquarters, and you can donate right. I know many of you already donated. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Praise God. We need like only like another 370 of you give a thousand dollars. We'll have this thing paid off and done in no time. But anyway, that's not the point of the live. The live today is a business live, and I'm so excited because Pastor Far has been here and he's been here for our global church family pastors retreat. So every year we have a pastor pastors retreat we bring pastors in senior pastors from literally around the world and to far was in we had um, i can't remember how many but i think 20 different churches or, or 15 different churches represented all different pastors all different churches coming together that's our global church family if you're a senior pastor yourself or you know a senior pastor then you can contact us globalchurchfamily.com mm -hmm. but anyway to pastor far taught a global church family then he taught our staff he ministered our staff on on monday and then today he made tv with me and then today I said, hey, you, you, you're not leaving till 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. I mean, come on, the day is yet young. So you're not leaving till 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. You can actually um, go ahead and teach on the supernatural business, business supernatural. So thanks for that. Chris says, uh, he's from Wisconsin. He says, I'm happy for the building. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate that. So Defara, um, you've got everyone on here. You've got Facebook, YouTube, and Underground all synced up together. Tell us what you want, what's on your heart today. Give us a word from the Lord that's really going to help us to, uh, to, to really move forward, praise God, because I, I really believe that um, you've got a word, you've got a unique revelation from someone who's come from poverty, you have a unique perspective, you're not from America, you're not from England, you're from a poor nation, and you've got a hold of the word of God, and now you really believe this, don't you? Amen. Come on. And so, you know, what I really want to talk about is this mindset mm -hmm. uh, of prosperity, mm -hmm. of abundance, <clears throat> that we need to adopt if we're really going to flow into it. Come on. And uh, it's, it's, it's just, it takes minor adjustments really mm -hmm. for us in our thinking. You know, the Bible says in Romans 12 verse 2, don't be conformed to the patterns of this world, but mm. be transformed by That's the good. renewing of your mind That's good. so that you may be able to prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. And so we so see good. that change in the way we think is going to help us prove or manifest what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God? It, mm -hmm. It's you know when we, and and really that's what it is from a poverty mindset to uh, a really experiencing the abundance of God, which is where God wants us. He says, "Come, taste and see that Come the on. Lord is good." So God wants all of us to to taste, you know, of His goodness Come with on. our own palates. We should be able to say, "Man, I've tasted it." Come on, and I think if we don't have this <laughs> mindset to fight, it doesn't matter what business we have, it doesn't yeah. matter what job you have, what business you want to start, if small business, whatever you do. I know there's a lot of small business owners on here and stuff. You might say, "Well, why are you teaching us on the mindset?" Because you will be your own worst enemy. In business, if you don't truly believe that God wants you to prosper, if you don't have this mindset, you're going to feel that little bit of guilt and resistance when you make money. You think, should I really be making this amount of money? Should Is it okay for me to do this? And obviously the answer is yes, that's why we're doing this. But Defar is going to give you some really good, solid foundations that you can think right about prosperity. Praise God. Grace in the marketplace is what you need. Amen. And so we see right from the start that this was, this this is God's will for mm -hmm. all of us Come on. Uh, in, in, in business, in the marketplace. Uh, if you work a job, this is God's will for you. Uh, it is to prosper. So I'm going to read Genesis 1, 26 to 28. I'm reading in the Message Bible. I love this. And this is what it says. It says, God spoke, let us make human beings in our image, make them reflecting our nature. So they, human beings, can be responsible for the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, 
the cattle and yes the earth itself and every animal that moves on the face of the earth god created human beings he created them godlike reflecting god's nature he created them male and female Come on. god bless them and so Thank what you. we see here with grammar and all these different things happening is that it says god bless them and then he puts a semicolon there then he puts open inverted commas and now we're getting ready to read brothers and sisters we're getting ready to read the very first words god ever heard uh, mankind ever heard from the mouth of God or God ever spoke to mankind. The first uh, words that God spoke to mankind. The this is first huge. sentence God ever said to mankind, it starts with the word prosper. Come on. Uh, he said prosper. He said reproduce. If you're reading in the King James Bible, it would say be fruitful, mm. which is the same thing. You still, you know, land mm. at the same airport. It says prosper, reproduce, fill the earth, take charge. Be responsible for the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, for every living thing that moves on the face of the earth. So we Come see on. through reading this scripture that actually, you know, the very first thing that God ever said to, to his children, to mankind, to his creation, you know, the crown jewel of Come his on. creation, mankind, the very first thing he said was prosper. Come on. I mean, God could have said many other things. Anything. He could have said uh, struggle. He could have said just hang in there. Worry. Worry. He could have said just, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, try your best. No, he didn't say any of that. He And you should be trying your best. But God's perfect will for his children is prosperity. He said prosper. Thank it's, you, it's, Lord. It's God's original intent for mankind. Amen. It is prosperity. Come on. As I want to say to you, really, you have to settle this in, 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 in your heart. Mm -hmm. We all have to. Yeah. Uh, because when I first heard about prosperity, I thought it was a it was a, a man-made idea. Mm -hmm. I thought it was something that, you know, um, uh, preachers came up with. <laughs> but when you read here, you realize that this is a God idea. Come on. This is God's original intent for all of so his good. children. This is why he repeats it again in Jeremiah 29, 11. He says, Come I on. have a plan for you. Amen. This plan is not to harm you. It's not to yeah. hurt you. But this plan is to prosper you. Come on. Uh, other versions of the Bible say this plan is to give you a hope and a future. Yeah. That's what God wants. Come on. Uh, for your business, that's what God wants for your career. He wants you to Come on. Uh, to prosper. He spells Come it on. out again in Third John prosper. one two. Come on. He said, "I wish above all things that you may prosper." And Come be on. in health even as your soul prospers. And so this Come is on. a this is a mindset it's that so I good. had to adopt. Come on. You know? Someone needs to put that in right now. Prosper. A few people have done. Just put prosper because that's the word God spoke to you. The very first word God spoke to mankind. Prosper. Put that in there. P R O S P E R. Prosper. And, and lots of explanation marks. YouTube, Facebook, Underground. Type that in right now. Prosper. We want to see you prosper. Praise God. It's so powerful to fire. And we shouldn't be feel, feeling guilty about this prosperity because yeah. it, it wasn't our idea. It's God's idea. It's God's, it's God's idea, idea, you know. And, and if people, you know, you know, try to criticize you, just tell them, hey, I can't help it. Come on. It wasn't my idea. This it's, is this what is God God's wants, wants for me. And so for me, for many, many years, this was an interesting paradigm shift. Come on. It's something different, isn't it's it? It's something different. It's different. When you're stuck in, in, in poverty and, and really it was a poverty of the soul. Mm, it was a pro on. poverty in my head. It's your way of thinking. It's your, your way of thinking. Come and, on. And, and a lot of people don't believe this. Come on. That it just took a minor adjustment. Just a minor adjustment. A change in my thinking that, you know, hey, God wants me to prosper as a man thinks in his heart. So is he. Come I'm going to start thinking prosperity. And there's so many other things that God has given us that yeah. activate this this mindset of abundance. This is so good. You know, uh, Kid George has got so many explanation marks of that. Prosper. Okay, we've got here, uh, we've got here, Jane says prosper, Ocam, uh, boot camp leader says prosper, and uh, Annika says prosper, Christine says prosper, man, we've got, we got Marshall, Demetrius, Wise Monique, Jody Larson, hi Jody, we've got all these people on here, uh, you can pronounce the African names. Tonzani Dinga. Tonzani Dinga says prosper, uh, Happy, Mark, Chris, Amy, we've got SG, we've got Patricia, we've got Stephanie, Botel, uh, Delene, hi Delene. Um, uh, we've got Praveen. They all say prosper, praise God. That is God's word for you today, prosper. Mm. He wants you to prosper. Never feel guilty for prospering God's way, praise God. Never feel guilty for prospering God's way. Ben says prosper. So many people want to prosper, praise God. So this is awesome, Devar. This is really going to help us change our mindset because yeah. otherwise we can feel guilty when, we, when we're successful in business. Yeah, and we have to uh, actually, you know, just start thinking uh, differently. Mm -hmm. This prosperity gives us the ability to be a blessing. God wants us to have an abundance. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to to start meditating on this 
this prosperity. In fact, wherever you see the word meditation in scripture, mm -hmm. uh, it always follows with it's always followed with prosperity. Oh, I mean, wow. think about it in Joshua. Yeah. He yeah. says, um, you know, you shall meditate on this book of the Lord day yeah. and night, and then shall you make your, your way, way successful, uh, successful prosperous. prosperous. And he says of the blessed man in Psalm chapter number one, yeah. he is his delight is in the law of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Uh, and in it, does he meditate day and night? And, he, you know, he becomes... Whatever he does, prospers. Whatever he does, prospers. Yeah, I never if, if you look even in the New Testament, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, the Apostle Paul is giving uh, a Timothy an instruction. He says, meditate on these things wow. and you shall profit. Wow. And so we see one of the things that will help so you as a business person is to start meditating on God's word mm -hmm. around prosperity, Amen. around victory. In the, so in the marketplace, you know, as you go to work, uh, meditate on his word around, around hey, we're going to win. We're going to meet our Come targets. On. We're going to get uh, sales coming in. Come we're going to get increase and in growth. When you look at the statistics, Amen. you know, you, your, your reality does not end with what the company starts look like. Come on. And so the graph on, may, may look different, you know, than you uh, wanted it to look, but do not be drawn in with just natural statistics. Come on. You must meditate on God's word at a higher level because so we don't look at things that are seen. Right, we, don't look at the, we don't look at the natural. We look we at things don't. that are unseen. We walk by we, faith and not by sight. Come Amen. On. And so as a business person, I want to encourage you that you may be in a in a, in a place where you, you're not experiencing these things that we are mm -hmm. talking about, but do not allow your soul, uh, do not allow your mind to meditate on that. Do not allow the, 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 the statistics, the things that are happening in the natural to paint on the canvas of your mm -hmm. imagination. The canvas of your imagination should be painted by the brush of God's word. Come on. You must think, so paint victory. Paint. See That's customers so coming in. Come on. Yes. See an increase in clients. Yeah, new customers, new, new contracts. Customers, new on. contracts. So good. Hey, see uh, um, negotiations for property. Yes. Uh, see favor in all these different things. And so uh, as you do that, you know, Chip and I, we've seen this. And, mm -hmm. and, and during COVID, uh, there were certain business deals that we expected to happen, but mm -hmm. because of COVID, didn't they happen. didn't happen. And so uh, we sat down and we decided we were going to go with the report of the good report of Come the on. Lord. And instead of just focusing on that and being discouraged, we started focusing on what the Bible has to say. Come on. God so is our source. God Hallelujah. is the one that will supply all our needs. Hallelujah. Uh, God is going to you know, bring the, the Gentiles to the brightness of our glory. And we started so meditating on all these things. And as we did that, Man, there was a, a business deal that came to us that we didn't go out looking for. Come on. We, we didn't it anticipate. It came to us. Come on. And uh, we signed it, and it covered, you know, that exact amount that we were expecting uh, the for Lord. the things that we were doing. And so, so God's got other ways of getting it to you. God's got God's other got ways of getting things to you. Of Come on. To you. That's so and, powerful. And, and his favor is, is on you. Amen. You know, Psalm 5, verse 12, his favor is on you. It surrounds you like a shield. Amen. And as you go into the marketplace, man, meditate on these things. Come and I'm on. telling you. As Thank you, you do that, you'll begin to experience uh, victory in the marketplace. So powerful. You know, we don't have yeah. to be moved by what we see. You know, the Come Apostle on. Paul says, these things do not move me. And I'm telling you, don't be moved by your circumstances. I believe there's some of you on, we're going to pray for you in a minute, but there's some of you on here, maybe you're struggling in your area of business. Maybe you haven't got your business started yet. Maybe in your work, you don't feel fulfilled in your work. You feel you're struggling in your workplace. We're going to pray for you, but you can shape your future. Come on. I love your wife's conference. I know you help with it too, but uh, Chipo Butai, uh, Pastor Chipo has a conference called Design a Life. Yeah. And the whole purpose of that is, is that you can design your life. You can actually speak forth. You can believe, use your faith, and you can change the future of your life. You might think that's impossible. No, this is very possible. The Lord says, I give you death and, you know, behold, I set before you heaven and earth and I, I set before you life and death. And he says, like, choose life. Choose life. Basically, you can choose life. And it's amazing how things can turn around when you have this attitude. It's it's so powerful when we see that, praise God. So this is all, this is a great word to follow. You can carry yes. on. This is I'm loving this, praise yeah, God. Yeah, so. and, and, and so we talked about meditation. And one mm -hmm. of the other ways, it's obvious, that will begin to activate, at least for me, mm -hmm. that activates a mindset of abundance is giving. Come on. You know, I've... I've I've seen this, you know, in my own life that mm -hmm. the, the, the number one excuse I had for not giving was, was this, I don't have. Come on, I don't have enough you know, to give. So, so I told myself. I don't have. I don't have. You know, once I have, I'm going to give. give. And, and that was a lie. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, you know, the Bible says as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So, is he. so if you wow. keep telling yourself you don't have, you wow. keep telling yourself, you know, one day in the future, in when the sweet by and yeah. by, I might have. Wow. 
Guess what? That becomes your reality. Wow. But when I switched that and I started giving from the little that I had, my mindset shifted from I don't have to I do have. That's so good. And I'm going to take That's from powerful. what I have and give it to someone else. This is why Jesus said in Acts 20, 35, it is more blessed to give than it is. It, it really yeah. is more blessed to he give means it. He means it. Than, than it is to receive. Because when you give, man, giving preaches a sermon to you. Come on, give him preach the sermon. If you give generously, let me tell you this, and we're not on here to try and, uh, you know, raise an offer, we're just telling you the truth. Yeah. If you are, if you're giving, if you give generously, and every single one of you can give generously, if you give generously, it's going to preach a sermon to you because it, it does. your soul and your flesh is going to freak out. Like, yeah. what are you doing giving all that money? You're going to, you, it's going to get your attention. And I tell yeah. people, if your giving gets your attention, it's definitely going to get God's attention. Amen. Praise God. But that's so powerful, Javar. You're saying there that you, you didn't believe you had something to give. You know, you're yeah. from an African Nation. You do, and I believe a lot of people, in, in, especially in third world nations, like African nations, and even here in America, will say things like, I can't afford to give. Yeah. And that's a lie, isn't it? That's a lie. You can't afford to give. Really, what you should be saying is, I can't afford not to give. There you go. See, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10 says, he gives seed to the sower. So the minute you determine to be a sower, he's going to give you seed. Mm. It might be a dollar. It Come might on. be 50 cents. Come on. It might be, you know, a shirt. But he will give you seed to sow so you can start sowing and reaping and sow more and reap more and sow more and reap more. Yeah. So it's really a lie to say that we, we, we don't have enough to give or we, ha we don't have anything to give. Yeah. So you have to get over that lie. You definitely have to get over that lie. And, and, and when you give, it brings a, 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 a new mindset. And mm. this is a mindset of abundance that we're talking about. Come on. And, and by the way, we talk, we're not just talking about giving to religious things. I'm right. talking about giving as a lifestyle. Yeah, just a generosity. Just, just yeah. everywhere you go, yeah, come you on. should be able to give. You know, I, I, I remember I went for, for lunch with this guy from my church. He was from New York. He was okay. from Brooklyn. And so he came to church and we went out to eat. And uh, he was going to, you know, take the bill. And, you know, we're always wrestling the bill, right, to try and take the bill. And he said, Pastor, let me take this one. And this is what he said. He said, I'm not the crocodile guy. I said, what's the crocodile guy? Crocodile, yeah. He said, the crocodile guy, you know, when it's eating time, his mouth is, is long and he's eating everything on the table. Just so snap, long snap, mouth, snap, long snap, mouth. Snap, snap. Long mouth. But he said this, he said, but when it's time to pay the bill, he sits up straight and all of a sudden his hands get short. Short arms. <laughs> Long mouth, shoe <laughs> arms, the crocodile guy. Then he right said, now. I'm not the crocodile guy. Long mouth, shoe arms. He said, I'm going to take the bill. I've been out with people that, you know, as soon as the bill comes, they run to the restroom. Yeah. Or they forgot their wallet, the old forgot the wallet thing. But most of the time, nine times out of ten, the people we hang around with will fight for the bill because right. we have this our understanding that it's more blessed to give than to receive. Yeah. And we have all sorts of fights over the bills. So when you live this generous lifestyle, I believe it's Isaiah, or oh, Psalm 51 says that he has a generous spirit. And I really believe the Lord's very nature. You know, he is good. Come on. He is love and he is generous. I believe part of who the Lord is is generosity. And if you get close to God, if you're reflecting God's character, you're going to be generous. In fact, let me say it another way. This is a bit harsh. But if you're not generous, then you probably don't understand who you are in Christ. You don't understand your new nature. Yeah. Because God's very nature is generosity. He loves to give rather than take. He's a giver, not a taker. Yeah. Amen. Come on, this is so good to follow. And I like uh, Proverbs 11, 24, probably one of my favorite, you that. know, scriptures. Mm -hmm. it, it talks about two different people, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And, and they are uh, uh, two different realities. Right. It says the first one is a, is a scatterer, and that's yeah. a word picture for someone who's generous. They're extravagant. Giving liberally. Yeah, giving yeah, they liberally, give liberally. Giving, giving yeah. generously. You know, they really are extravagant in their giving. Yeah. It says what they scatter, yeah. right? In other words, they give to everything, but it says something interesting. It says they scatter, yet increase. Come on. Even though and they're giving away, they're increasing. They so increase naturally, it. that doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any sense. And then he flips it and he says, there's he who withholds more than is me. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they hoard. Yeah. Uh, they walk around with a closed hand. They hold, yeah. And how many of you know that you can't receive with a closed hand? You know, if someone tries to give you something, you can't receive with a so closed hand. They're just holding hand. on to what they have. They just hold on to what they have. And because of that, it says it leads to poverty. Wow. And then it says the, the, the liberal soul yeah. shall be made fat. In other words, the liberal soul, the person who's generous mm -hmm. in their lifestyle, uh, they increase more. They shall be made a prosperous. And it's a kingdom. Wow you know, reality that we see. And um, man, this is the, uh, what I'm talking about right now is, is a different way of thinking. Come on. You start to think this way, it changes your entire It's actually reality. the opposite way of thinking. And if you think about it, everything in the kingdom of God is opposite to the yeah. world's way of doing things. If you want to be first, the kingdom of God says be last. If you want to be the greatest leader, the kingdom of God says be the greatest servant. If someone robs you, you forgive them. If, you know, if, if someone hates you, you love them. If you want wisdom, you speak in Babel. Mm. If you want extra finances, you give finances away. It doesn't make sense to our natural mind. But here's the thing. You have to get with the program. You changed address. When you got born again, you went from the kingdom of darkness 
to the kingdom of the son of his love. You yeah. have now got a different address. You're seated with him in heavenly places. And we have to operate financially from heaven's economy, not from this world's economy. Sure, in the world, you hold all you get, right? Yeah. Get all you can, sit on the can. Yeah. You know, get, get all you can, can all you get, all you get, and sit on the can, yeah. as Andrew Romick says. But you know, now you're part of heaven's economy. You have to think differently. And heaven's right. economy is a given economy. And yeah. as you give, Proverbs eleven twenty four, you're going to receive. Praise God! You're going to be. You're going to reap. Amen. So powerful. I love this. And and the third thing that's going to activate, you know, your your mindset of abundance is mm. learning how to be faithful mm. uh, with the little. Learning Come how on. to steward, you yes. know, the little. If you read in Genesis one, which we just read, uh, verse we read verse twenty eight to twenty nine. Twenty eight. Yeah. Verse 26 to 28. Mm -hmm. Verse 29, it just says, uh, God said, Behold, I've given you every herb bearing seed, Come on. which is upon the face of all the earth, every Amen. tree in which is the fruit of the tree, yielding seed, Come on. to you shall it be for meat. And so when God... Uh, gave you know uh, mankind uh, stewardship over the, yeah. the earth. He made sure that he gave us the garden with so much potential. It had seed in it, yeah. and on. and and I call seed uh, God class technology. That's God, what seed is. God class technology. You have to explain yeah. this far. I've never heard that saying before. Yeah. The first time I heard it was was an hour ago when we was making television. God class technology. That's what seed is, because with all of our creativity and innovation as mankind, one thing we haven't been able to do is to create something and put seed in it right. for it to reproduce, right? right. It would have been awesome for my iPad to come with... Uh, iPad mini. <laughs> with yeah, seeds I mean, on it. I yeah. plant them in the back of my yard and, you know, rip yeah. some iPads. In it doesn't months. matter what they make. They can make <laughs> robots. I mean, now they're making robots like humans. Yep. But those robots, I don't, I don't want to get graphic in case kids are watching. But those two robots cannot produce another robot, can they? It's God they technology. Can't have seed. Wow. Only God can create something wow, and put seed so in it. So good. And so yes, the truth is that when God gave you your business, when he gave you Come your on. career, when he gives you your job, it comes in seed form. Come on. That's why it so may good. not look like it's much. Ah, that's good. Because it's just seed. And if you don't have the wisdom and the insight to see the value of seed potential, mm, you can treat it like trash. Wow. And so I'm here to tell you, don't treat your business like trash come because on. it still looks like seed. I mean, when you oh, look at so seeds, good. you know, we eat all kinds of fruits back home, yeah. oranges, when you eat oranges, we treat seeds like, you know, you it's just throw away seed, yeah. you know, you put it in, you know, I mean, seed, you, there's nothing much to it. Right. And sometimes that's what people do with what God gives them. Wow. Your business idea, uh, it comes in seed form. And so wow. you need you need maturity. You need, mm. you need uh, uh, insight to be able to value seed, uh, uh, a potential, you know, so seed, I call them seed ideas potential. Mm -hmm. This is why scripture says not to uh, 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 despise the days of small beginnings, mm. uh, but we must we must value those things that God gives us, not to despise the days of so small good. beginnings. Yeah. Uh, we must value it. We must treasure it. We must be faithful with it. Uh, so that it can grow and become and become much, but it all comes with value and, and, mm -hmm. and being faithful. So good. So so I want to talk to someone. You may not be in the job that you 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 really believe right. uh, you deserve, but be faithful where you are. Yeah. It's it's just seed. Don't treat that seed uh, like trash. You may not your business may not look like what you really believe the full potential is. Right. Be faithful. Pour yourself in there, and I'm telling you, before you know it, that seed is going to be unleashed, and the whole world will be Thank changed. You. Jesus. Because of your faithfulness over that seed. That's so good, Defy. That's so Praise powerful. God. And I know there's lots of people on here with businesses or they want to start businesses or they've got jobs or whatever they're doing right now. This is a business supernatural live. So we're going to pray for you in a minute. Defy has an anointing for this. He's going to pray for you and you're going to see an impartation in the world of business and making money. Praise God. He's got a real, a real, uh, uh, um, just an anointing for this. So remember to ask your questions. If you have any questions for Defy or me or both any questions to do with finances, giving, prosperity, business, Put them in the comments now. We'll answer them at the end of Tafar's word. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 And so, and so, you know, if we look at uh, Matthew twenty-five, mm -hmm. there's 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 this master who gave talents to his, uh, you know, uh, servants. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and those talents represent potential. Come you on. You know, they represent opportunities. Mm -hmm. And he says to one, he gave, you know, five. To another, he gave two. To mm -hmm. another, he gave one. Yeah. And he said, it says he told them. He said, occupy until I come. Come or on. Go do business. You know, until I come. 
And uh, the one we had five valued those oh. five talents yeah. and went and multiplied them. He was faithful. And when the master came back, he said this. He said, well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will make you ruler over many wow. things. So you took those five seeds, if you like, you and multiplied, multiplied them. them. And on. because of that, he entered into a realm of supernatural promotion. Mm. God said... Because you are faithful with this little, I will make you ruler over many things. Come on. And so God is responsible for our promotion. Mm -hmm. You know, not man. Uh, promotion does not come from the east or the west. It is God who, brings, who brings promotion. And Thank so, you, Lord. And so we have to apply ourselves, you know, faithful yeah. in whatever we do and Come not on. be lazy about it, not, so not be slack. Uh, faithful with relationships. Yes. Uh, faithful with uh, finances. Come faithful on. with our time. Yeah. We have to apply ourselves uh, faith, when, when we do that, we, we step into, we position ourselves really for promotion. These seemingly small things are a big deal to They're God. You know, you can find this in Luke 16 as well. It says, he who's been faithful in another man's who will give him his own. He who's been faithful in unrighteous mammon, talking about money, we give him true riches. He who's been faithful in little will be given much. You know, right. I, I, they're, they're, I've got the order mixed up, but it's the same thing. Those three things are so important. And Defar, you said about the parable of the talents. It always used to bother me, this parable, because one got five, one got two, one got one. Right. And I thought, that's not fair. Yeah. How comes the one with five got five? But in, in Matthew 25, verse 15, I love this. It says that he gave one five, one two, and then one one, each according to their ability. Come on. So the master knew his servants. And you know what? This guy has been faithful. Yep. He's proven himself. I'm going to give him more responsibility. I'm going to give him five talents. Right. This guy, he's okay. I think he's going to be okay. I'll give him two. And this guy, I'm really not sure about. I'm just going to give him one. Yeah. And the one with one had the chance to be faithful with that one. Yeah. And then next round, he probably would have got two or five. Come on. But he didn't. He was unfaithful with that one. So, so carry on, Devon. Yeah, and, and, and I, I, used to, I used to feel bad for the one who yeah, had yeah. one talent. Only one talent. You know, until I Googled it. Oh. And I'm really being conservative. When I Googled it, in the Old Testament, the talent is about 33.3 kgs. And, and the master doesn't Gold. give... The master doesn't give trash. So Come this on. was 33.3 kgs of gold oh, that the master gave. But if you look at the real value of a talent in the New Testament, it's actually mm -hmm. 58 kgs. I don't know what that is in pounds. It's a lot. That's a lot. It's, it's a, a lot. lot of pounds. It's a, a lot, lot of gold. weight, you know. It's a lot of gold. And, uh, and, and, and which is equivalent to 2.5 million US Oof. dollars. You know, Man. just one talent. Man. So the guy with one talent got two he had point. Enough. Two he had enough point. to start a business with. He had enough to do something. Come on. I mean, when I found that yeah. out, I started praying, Lord, all I need is one talent. I take half a talent. <laughs> I'll, take I'll take half a talent. I don't even want one talent. I'll take half a talent. That's so good. But, good. but the guy with one talent went and, you know, uh, you uh, buried that thing. Mm -hmm. And when the master came, he said, what did you do with my talent? He said, I knew you to be a hard man. And so what we, we see with the other two guys is stewardship, good mm -hmm. stewardship. We see faithfulness. What we see with a guy with one talent is, uh, is, is entitlement, mm -hmm. you know, bad stewardship. Mm -hmm. And the guy said, laziness. I knew you, laziness. Yeah. He said, you, you, if you read in the uh, uh, message, it says you, are, you, you didn't know how to take risks. Right. You know, you didn't want to take risks. So uh, the master then said to him, you know, I'm going to take away that talent. Come on. I'm going to take it away from you and I'm going to give it to the guy with 10 and uh, you will have uh, 11. And, and if you read this, 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 this parable with the right mindset, realizing that these are five opportunities, a talent represents the opportunities. Opportunities. This, this changes it. So they're opportunities. These are opportunities. You know, God, when he says five talents, he's talking about opportunities. Talents represent opportunities. Mm. This is why he could take away that one talent and give it. He's not taking away his ability. Ah. He's not taking away his skill because the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. Come on. He doesn't so take that away. But what he will take away is the opportunity. And this is why we say Good in word. Grace in the Marketplace, opportunities flow in the direction of faithfulness. Come on, say that again, Devo. That's powerful. Opportunities flow in the direction of faithfulness. Wow, come on. Have, so you, have, have, you, have you ever met this one guy who every opportunity in town seems mm -hmm. to follow them? Yeah. I mean, they're already on TV. Oh, they're yeah. already doing this. They're already doing that. But they got they're favor. getting another they got opportunity. Favor. Yeah, they got favor. Like, favor. And, and it's, it's faithfulness because of their, their, the opportunities are following them because of, of their faithfulness. Wow, and so then he good. kept it with this. I'm going to end with this. He kept oh. it with this. He said, for unto everyone who has, verse 29 of uh, Matthew 25, he says, unto everyone who has shall be given, and he shall have an abundance. 
And now I used to read this, you know, with the mindset that the rich are going to get richer. That's not what he's talking about. Right. The, 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 the subject matter is opportunities and yeah. faithfulness. Yeah. And so if you were to read it, you know, in context, it should sound something like this. For unto everyone who has faithfulness, more, shall, more opportunities shall be given. And he shall have an abundance. From him that does not have faithfulness, even the little opportunities that he has, shall be taken away and given uh, to on. those who have opportunities. That's and so, so powerful. you know, this, this really is an I encouragement to someone who may be dealing in with small things. Uh, don't give up. Don't quit. Don't treat it cheaply. Be faithful. Faithfully apply. Be thankful. Come on. Praise God. That's so Thank good. the Lord uh, for however amount of money you're turning over. Amen. Be grateful and be, be faithful. And as you do that, Man, I'm telling you, there's an increase that just comes on it. That's so good. Thank you. Amen. Jafar, that's so powerful. We're going to pray for you right now. I'm going to ask you a question in a minute. But right now, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, I speak to every person watching right now. I thank you. They have the ability to, to produce wealth. Yes, they have Lord. the power to get wealth. I thank yes, you, Lord, Lord, for this. We, we have this five-talent mentality. Lord. I thank you. Thank we're going to take Lord. every opportunity and multiply it, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for prosperity and every person watching, every business represented. Every person who's employed, the businesses they're employed in are going to be blessed because they're just like just like Potiphar was blessed because of Joseph, just like Pharaoh was blessed because of Joseph. I think Laban was blessed because of Jacob. I think all these people, these businesses are going to be blessed because Amen. of the worker. It doesn't matter if you're the janitor, if you're the lowest position, that business is going to be blessed because the anointing's on you. I thank you all for new contracts, new customers, new ideas, witty inventions, innovation. I thank you all you're showing people. I thank you all that they we have the mind of Christ. Yes. And I thank you we are finding new ways of doing things. And we find solutions to problems that no one else could find, just Come like on. Daniel did. Yes. Found the solutions to that. And I thank you, we are getting rewarded for that financially in Jesus' name. I thank you, yes, there's going to be bosses out there that said, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I want to promote you. I don't Come know why I'm doing this, I want to give you more money. I thank you that, that people are going to receive businesses. I thank yes, you, people are going to receive new customers, mm -hmm. new ways of doing things. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Thank you for thank prosperity. You, in Jesus' name, Hallelujah. thank you, Lord. Carry and pray to Father, the people Jesus. watching. Father, thank we you, just Lord. thank you. We just thank mm -hmm. you, Lord, for everyone watching. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I just pray right now, open doors Come of on. opportunity. Yes, Lord. Open doors of opportunity. Yeah, I thank you, Jesus Father, name. that you're opening doors thank you, Lord. that no man can close. Come on. Lord, I thank you that thank the doors Keisha, that you are closing, the doors of confusion, mm. uh, the doors of the enemy just Keisha, trying to come in and uh, plunder. Uh, Lord, mm. I thank you that those doors cannot be opened Come any on. longer. I thank you, Father, that today is a new day. Hallelujah. Today is a new day. It's the Amen. beginning of new things. I pray, Father, you, uh, Deuteronomy chapter number 28, verse 12, that yes. whatsoever they do Come on. is for their hands. blessed. It thank is you, prosperous. Amen. Lord, I thank you. You've already blessed the work of their hands. Thank and you. everywhere that they go, whatever they get involved Come with, on. everyone watching, Lord, I thank you, Father, that it will uh, uh, be blessed. It will yes. be fruitful. It will produce. Hallelujah. It will change lives. I thank you, Father. I thank you for witty inventions. I thank you for creative mm -hmm. ideas. Mm -hmm. I thank you for divine connections. Yes. I thank you, Father, for new relationships. Yes. I thank, thank you for you. new experiences. Mm -hmm. I thank you, Father, for new places. Thank you. I yes. thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That that this is a this is a new season. This is a new season. I see. Uh, in the Come spirit on. right now, Come I see on. someone, you, you know, you've been walking, you've been trying really hard mm. uh, with your business and you've been applying yourself faithful. And what I see is there's a season coming where there is a, uh, it's almost like a, a, that airport belt. That, oh, that, yeah, yeah. That, belt. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, that, that yeah. airport belt that we walk on. Oh, yeah. You know, the um, uh, travel. Travelator. The travelator. Travel it's travel almost like tales, there's yeah, a travel travelator. Later. That's, mm -hmm. you're stepping in onto a travelator mm. in this season. And, and you're going to just keep being faithful. Keep walking. Acceleration. Except this time around, there's an acceleration. There's an exponential leap. Acceleration. You know, going forward. Jesus it's the name. same pace. It's the same thing Come you've on. been doing, but just a different uh, uh, experience now because Such of what's happening word. in the spirit. And I feel Such that a that's word. a word yes. for someone in Such the marketplace. Receive it. Receive it. Uh, promotion is coming. Promotion is coming your way. Amen. And it's going to be supernatural. Thank it's gonna you, be, Jesus. You're going to look and say, this is the Lord's doing. Hallelujah. And it is marvelous uh, in our eyes. Hallelujah. We thank he you, Father. We thank you for this thank word. You. And Amen. we release it right now. Yes, Even over the it. airwaves, we receive release it, it right into now. the si he cyberspace. And Lord, I just thank you he that your daughter, your, your son, whom that word is for, mm -hmm. they will receive it in yes. their heart. The enemy cannot steal it. 
but it will produce 30, 60, and 100 fold in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Receive that Thank right you, now in Jesus. That's a word from God. Thank you, Father. You do the same thing, but you're going to have acceleration. Thank, Thank you, you, Jesus. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Man, that's powerful. You need to receive this. Write this date down. Today is the, uh, I don't even know what day it is. Is it the, 20, is it the 27th today? It's the 20. I don't know what day it is. What are the days of the day? 28th. It's June the 28th. Write this date down, praise the Lord. This is June the 28th, 2022. Come this on. is a landmark for you. You've received this. It's been an impartation, praise God. You've received it. Now go and walk in it. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Go and walk in that. There's going to be an acceleration, praise God. I love it. That's awesome, praise God. Now, be careful what you say to Father. The boss is on. Pastor Chipo right. is on here. Hi, Pastor Chipo. Your man's coming back tomorrow. I guess it's going to be I'm Thursday by the time we get, yeah, get I'm there. Gonna, I'm Thursday. Gonna get home on Thursday. Thursday. He's coming home early, praise God. So uh, we have a question here from uh, uh, Bontel. Um, how would you pronounce their last name? Bontler. 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 Yeah. Bontler says, how can one pursue a career in fitness? That's interesting. You're into fitness. Right. How can you pursue a career in fitness, for example, like a personal trainer, without right. making people feel image-focused or conscious but make them understand we are to steward our bodies. That's a good question. I think it's a great question. And I think you already have the perspective. Mm -hmm. You already have the right uh, frame and mindset for that. Mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, while our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost, we don't worship our bodies, you Come know. On. We worship Jesus. We Amen. worship God. And so we should take care of our bodies. The Bible mm -hmm. says, you know, physical exercise has mm -hmm. little profit. Yeah. But godliness, you know, has yeah. much profit. So uh, I think you already have a, a great mindset, which is to help people get healthy, help people, you know, exercise without actually turning their bodies into some sort of, you know, idol. identity, yeah. idol, idol, you know, that they can, yeah, our identity comes from Jesus. I'm well free of idolizing my body. <laughs> <laughs> we all are. But here's the thing. No, it's true because it's a very important thing. And um, that's a good question because I do believe as a body of Christ, we've probably gone too far the other way where we say, hey, well, this is just our earth suit. We're going to get a new one in heaven. Yeah. Let's just eat everything we can. You know, and that's eat unhealthy. Bad yeah, and eat, uh, that's bad stewardship. So I actually believe it's very important to be healthy yeah. and to train and to work out, not because you're idolizing your body in it, because we want to be around for a long time to yeah. preach the gospel. Come on. And we want to steward what God gives us. Anything. If you have a car, you should steward your car. I mean, one time to far. I had this car and it had trash in there and the Holy Spirit kept saying, that's not good stewardship. Yep. You got trash in there, that's not good stewardship. And I kept saying, okay, Lord, I'll do it tomorrow. That's not good stewardship. You got trash in your car, clean it out, clean it out, clean it out. And then one day the Holy Spirit said to me about a week in, he said, what if Andrew Womack was to take a lift? And this was back 10, 15 years ago. I was like, there's no way Andrew Womack's going to get into my car. So I ignored it. The next day, I'm driving down the college driveway and Andrew jumps out and flags me down. He says, can you give me a lift down Ooh. to... And I was like so embarrassed, Ooh. trashing my car. And the host was said, told you. So the point is, you can be a steward of your body just like you we're, in, we're meant to steward possessions. Things that Whatever God gives us, we should steward and look after. And I think it's a great idea. And you don't have to... Um, a bonto, you don't have to shame people or anything. And I believe you can do things online now. Yeah. I mean, if I was you, here's what I would do. I would do some fitness classes online. Put yeah. them on YouTube. Put them on Facebook. I would follow those and say to people, hey, come on, people, let's get, and maybe you could offer a light workout or and a difficult workout. You could do some HIIT workout, you know, high-intensity training, that type of thing, and have people follow you and doing that. I'm still waiting for someone, you know, Apple, I'm not, I don't work for Apple, I'm not endorsing them, but Apple have Apple Fitness, and they have it on the television. You can follow it, and your Apple Watch, you know, does your heart rate and stuff. I'm still waiting for someone to get that and actually take it one step further and actually like coach me in doing that. So you right. could actually make videos that complement what Apple have already got on, but right. more specific for you. So there's ways you could even do Facebook Lives. I know someone, I know a lady who does Facebook Lives, fitness classes, and she said, hey, at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning, I'm gonna go live, join me and I'll coach you. You can start doing that. Right. And then as you do that more and more, then you can ask people to, to subscribe or to donate and you can start making it into a monetary, you know, monetize it into a business. But there's lots of things, especially with the internet nowadays, you can do things. I've got another friend of mine, they do boot camps, not the not the Zoom boot camps we do. They do fitness boot camps and they go out and do it on the in the park when the weather's mm. nice and it doesn't cost them anything. Right. And everyone gives them five dollars and they have like uh, twenty or thirty people there and they lead a boot camp. So mm. there's different things you can do there, uh, definitely for sure. A couple more questions here. Christina says, um, would you both share some of your favorite personal testimonies in the areas of finances or business where God outdid himself in blessing you? The goodness of God. I'll start and then I'll let Tafari do one. So we had this house once in uh, England that uh, we had for 12 years and we, it was our own house. We moved here to America. And uh, some of you may have heard this story, but it's such a great story. And it was time to sell it. And I tried mm. to offer it to the family. One Christian family had been in that house for 12 years. 
And I tried to sell it to them, but they didn't want to buy it. They did yeah. not want to buy it. So then I thought, I don't want to sell it and kick them out because I want to put people first. You know, we always put people before profit. Come it's on. always people first. So I didn't want to put pe- I didn't want to kick them out. So I thought, but I had to sell it for tax purposes and everything else. I couldn't keep this house. So I was like, Lord, there must be another way. You know, when there seems to be no way, Come on. some of you need to hear this, where there seems to be an impossible situation, when you're up against the mountains and the Red Sea and there's no way out, God will give you a way of escape. That's right. So I prayed in the Holy Ghost. I said, Lord, I need your help with this. And I prayed in the Holy Ghost and he gave me an, an, a name uh, of a friend of mine who's into real estate. His name's Dan Dyer, a great guy. Yeah. So I thought, oh, I'm going to see Dan Dyer. And I had a conference with him. I was speaking at a conference. We both uh, speak at the same conference. I'm going to see him in a month's time at this conference. So I went to see him at the conference. I said, Dan, here's my situation. I wrote yeah. down the figures. I said, I owe this much on the mortgage. The house is worth this much. This is the situation. What, what should I do? And Dan's a uh, real estate expert, and he looked at me and said, I've got nothing. And I was so mad to fall. I was yeah. like, God had told me he had my answer. But he said, no, I've got nothing. I thought, this is crazy. God told me to see Dan. You know, maybe I missed it. So I went to bed that night. The next morning, the second day of the conference, he came to me, he grabbed me, he said, Ashley, I want you to meet someone. And he, he introduced me to this young lady from England. Watch yeah. this. This young lady just received an inheritance. She had X amount of money to spend. And this was her prayer. She said, Lord, I don't want to look for tenants. I yeah. want to be a landlord but I want a good Christian family. I want a house for this much money and I want it to be in my hometown or within 30 minutes of my hometown. She lived 30 minutes from my house in England. It was already tenants in there and it was the same money she wanted to give for it. Praise God, she bought that house, no realtors, no fees. She bought that house. That family was able to stay in that house. She was able to become a landlord without having to do any of the hard work or vetting or anything else. We were even allowed to keep our stuff in the garage there and store it. It was a win, 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 praise God. Only God could do a supernatural thing like that and put that deal together. She flew around the world 5,000 miles to, to this conference in Denver and found a solution right there. Only God can make that up, praise God. There's Come supernatural. On. God wants to do supernatural things in your business. The working of miracles, the, the spiritual gift of working of miracles Come isn't on. just for healing. Yes. You can have workings of miracles in finances. Come on. And we've seen it time and time again. That's a great question. I actually you. met her. You met her, yeah. I met yeah, her yeah, awesome. uh, the following year. Uh, at the same conference, Come on. you gave the testimony and you asked her to stand. Yeah, she, yeah. And uh, she was from England and oh. I met her at that same conference. All the way from England. That's, yeah, a, God, yeah, that's yeah. a work in a miracles in finances. Yeah, that's powerful. What's your favorite? What's so one, for, one me, your favorite? for me, it's a recent one. I mean, I have, I have many mm-hmm. because of what the Lord has done in our lives. I mean, I have one in the ministry and I have mm-hmm. one in our own personal lives. Uh, uh, Chip and I made a decision to pay off, you know, one of our apartments uh, uh, two years ago. Okay. And I mean, supernaturally, just God opened the door that brought, you know, uh, income and finances for mm-hmm. us. Uh, a big chunk that Come we on. didn't expect. And, Praise you know, we, we definitely applied ourselves and we uh, did some work and uh, we got that uh, big deposit and we were able to pay off that apartment. The Praise first Lord. ever uh, 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 you know, property that we own. Paid off, 100%, Paid off. no mortgage, off, no loan, no nothing. That's nothing. awesome. Praise so, the Lord. And so powerful. that was a big one. And then That's on the powerful. ministry side, you know, one of my friends just reached out to me uh, during COVID. It was at the peak of COVID. Mm-hmm. And he said, hey, listen, uh, I want to send you, we want to wire you 50,000 US dollars in the ministry. 50,000 $50, US dollars Thank in the you, ministry. Jesus. And it was amazing because they were in New York, never met the person in my wow. life. I still Come haven't on. met the person. Come on. I don't know who it was. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, it was three messages later. It took three messages for God to, you know, give into the ministry wow. 50,000. Thank you, Jesus. The US dollars. That's and, so powerful. Man, it blew my mind. I love it. That's it so powerful. Praise God. We've had things where we bought things. You know, I used to buy and sell Come a lot on. of things. We bought one item, it was $250, and I sold it for $1,500. Just a few weeks later. I'm telling you, working in miracles is, is, is out there. When you put your hand to something, see, God says in Deuteronomy 28, he says he'll bless the works of your hands. Come on. He blesses what you put your hands to. So put your hands to something, and you'll start seeing that supernatural increase. No putting your hands to something, no nothing. In fact, I tell people, you know, uh, uh, Proverbs 10.22 says, the blessing of the Lord Come on. makes one rich. So God's blessing is going to make you rich. But there's also things we have to do, you know, we're automatically blessed, but are we going to activate it? Are we going to walk it out? And and there's two things. Tafar spoke about the first things. Proverbs eleven twenty four. There's one who scatters yet increases more. The verse twenty five says there's one who waters and yet himself be watered. The 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 generous soul will be made rich. Mm. Generosity giving will make you rich. Mm. And the second one is Proverbs thirteen four. Come on. That says the diligent soul diligent will be made rich. Soul. So if you're diligent, apply yourself. Yeah, if you're diligent, apply yourself, and you're a giver, man, hold on. It's just going to be a matter of time before you're blessed. Real quickly, I've got a couple more questions. Then we'll move on. Um, 
You can pronounce these African names. In fact, Pravin says, I should do an unplugged episode where I pronounce <laughs> African names. As long as it's not offensive to anyone in African nations, I would pronounce Nigerian, Ugandan, Kenyan names, because Zimbabwe names, they're hard to pronounce. How do you pronounce that one? Um, Tozani. 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 Tozani Dinga. Tozani Dinga says, how do I make sure that I'm not wasting my resources by giving without any reaping what I sowed? Well, that's a good question. How am I not, how am I not wasting my resources by giving and without any reaping what I've sowed. So they're saying they're giving and they're not reaping. It's interesting. Yeah, I think, you know, the Bible talks about giving with, uh, uh, with you know, uh, cheer in our hearts. Oh, they're, cheerful they're, givers, yeah. They're, 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 you know, when you decide you're going to give something, don't do it complaining. Don't Come do on. it with an attitude. Yep. Be good. a cheerful giver. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this heart of, of gratitude mm -hmm. is, is when we bring things to the Lord, we must bring them with this heart of, of gratitude. Come and on. I believe that all these different things that God instructs us uh, to do. He said in uh, Psalm 51, I believe, to the children of Israel, he said, man, I'm not rebuking you for your yeah. offerings because they were bringing in offerings. Yeah. He said, but the attitude is the problem. Come on. And he goes on to rebuke them and he said, man, if I was hungry, I wouldn't ask you. And so the attitude right. is also as important as the gift that we bring. Yeah. But, uh, you know, giving... It may look like you're not reaping because sometimes it doesn't happen uh, the next day, the next week. Mm -hmm. I like how you put it, Ashley, that when we sow seed, we shouldn't have a vegetable garden mentality. We should yeah. have an orchard mentality. Come on. That is yeah. going to be a tree. I was thinking about it today yeah. when I was spending time with the Lord. I said, this is a powerful revelation from Ashley, that when you sow seed, it's going to be a tree. Yeah. And I have a little lemon tree at yeah. my house. It keeps producing fruit lemons. every season. You pick the lemons off, more lemons. More pick lemons. lemons off. And it inside die. those lemons are seeds, yeah, seeds to plant more lemon trees. Right. And so Come when on. you put seed in the ground, believe for it to reap a harvest mm -hmm. multiple times Come for on. many generations to yeah, come. so good. And one thing I will say as well is, you know, we give devotionally. So when you give, maybe you give to Faithfield Church, maybe right. you give to Teridus Ministries, maybe you give to Andrew Roman Ministries, wherever you give to your church, you give devotionally. So it's, right. it's holy money, it's to God. You give devotionally, you give tithes, first fruits, offerings, you give devotionally. But most of the time, 90, nine times out of 10, unless you're a full-time minister, nine times out of 10, the money comes back to you transactionally. Come on. So it comes back to you with business deals. That's powerful. It comes back to you with increase in your job, maybe a promotion. And I guarantee if you've been sowing, you probably haven't even seen or recognized some of the places you've reaped where God has maybe made, you know, the widow woman, her, her, the oil kept flowing. And the other widow woman, the meal and the flour, never, the meal and the oil never run out. He will sustain you. He will also increase you Come on. transactionally. You'll have some overtime opportunities and business deals, things like that. So don't don't miss out on transactional wealth. God gets things to you transactionally. That's right. You you reap devotionally, he gets back to you transactionally, praise God. Um, maybe one more question. Khalid says, please help me understand. We tithe and we give to three ministries, but we are struggling every month and I need a job. Okay, Khalid, so the similar to what I just so said, same, same, same thing. Answer. Put your hands to something, praise God. Make sure that you're giving with a good heart. I would not give, or I would tithe. I always, you know, I believe tithing and first fruits are joined together. I believe when money comes in, I give the first off the top the best. You know, they used to give the first um, uh, lamb that was born, the first born lamb. They used to give the first fruits of the crop. You should give the first off the top. Don't, don't you know, pay your rent, pay your bills, you know, go to Starbucks and all that, and then give a tithe. That's not really a first fruit. A tithe needs to come off the top. So I'd give the top. But be careful with how you're doing this. Make sure you're doing it in the right attitude. You're doing it as part of worship to the Lord. And I'd really encourage you, Colette, put your hands to something. Start making phone calls. Start mm. doing things. See, grace is provided for you, but your job by faith is to walk it out. Come on. So you're not going to go around with anxiety and stress and, and saying, you know, how am I going to make ends meet? Mm. You know, you're going to say, thank you, Lord, you have provided for me. Mm. Thank you, Lord, you have got a job for me. Thank you, Lord, there is prosperity for me. Now, where is it, Lord? And you go and put your hands to something that way. And right now, Come in on. Jesus' name, Colette, I pray for increase on yeah. the Yes, that you've sown. I thank you for a job right now in Jesus' name. I thank yes, you for the Lord. right job for Colette in Jesus' name. Thank Colette you, Walker, receive your job in Jesus' name. Start knocking on doors, start making some phone calls, mm. start sending some emails. Your job is coming in Jesus' yes, name. Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Then one more question from Praving. Um, let me see here. He's got uh, two questions actually. I said, People prosper at varying levels. Do you believe be it unto your faith applies here? Or has God set prosperity goal he wants us to hit? And we are driven by giving vision, vision that is in us. So Pravin is saying, uh, is there a limit to prosperity? And I think God's limitless. Yeah, God is, I mean, his grace is mm -hmm. infinite. Come on, limitless. And uh, 
you know, he will supply you whatever you need mm -hmm. for your assignment. Come on. So that you're able to accomplish the things that he has called you to accomplish. Come on. And so there's provision for that. And for, for you, definitely take care of all your needs. Oh, yeah. Come on. Uh, and he'll give you extra so that you're able to become a blessing and to accomplish the things that God has called you to. He's so good. Harry Harris is on here. Praise God. I love Harry. I went to Bible school with him. So, you know, um, I look at it this way. You know, a hundredfold of something. The Bible says you can have a hundredfold return. If you were to get a chessboard and you times... You know, they say there's an old ancient proverb. They've got a chessboard. They put one grain of rice right. on the first, then two on the second, and then four on the third, yep. and then eight, and then 16, and then 32, and then 64. That's folding. That's folding. And at first, it's slow. But folding something, when you fold it, when you get 100 fold, did you know if you filled a chessboard up, there's 64 squares on chessboard. Now, you can Google this. You can fact check me. It sounds ridiculous, but this is a fact. This is a mathematical phenomenon. Phenomenon. If you double the rice on each square of a chessboard. When you get to that 64th square, when you go up and down the chessboard and get to that 64th square, do you know how much rice you'll have? Right. You'll have rice as big as the Mount Everest. Wow. That's how much rice you'll have. That momentum. You'll have more, more rice than the, than the earth can produce in a thousand years. That's, I mean, you have so much rice. And you say, how's that work? It's because it's exponential growth. The fold is more than times in. The fold that's is good. very powerful. So that 64 fold, 100 fold is actually limitless. I believe the 100 fold return is a limitless return. It's like if you had an apple, and you took that seed out, you can count how many seeds in an apple, but you can't count how many apples in that seed because as you sow that seed, it's going to produce another tree. Yeah. And that tree is going to produce apples. And those apples are going to produce seeds. Not only that, they're going to produce apples every year, mm -hmm. sometimes twice a year. And every apple is going to have, what, another five seeds in it. And you plant them five seeds, there's another five trees. And those five trees are going to produce all those apples. It, I'm telling you, there's no limit to God's prosperity. And Praveen, if you want a, a definition on on prosperity, God's way, we said this in the TV program we filmed just earlier, the definition of, of prosperity, God's way, because there's different nations, people in different economies. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. God is able to make all grace abound towards you. All of it. That you have in all sufficiency, mm. in all time, of all things, may have an abundance for every good work. Mm. God's definition of true prosperity is having your needs met all the time. So all your needs met all the time, all sufficiency in all things, but also that you have an abundance, you have extra Come on. for every good work to be able to give. That's, it doesn't matter if you're in, a, in, the, in the jungle in the Congo, it doesn't matter if you're, if you're in New York City, it doesn't matter wherever you are, God's going to give you enough to pay your bills and to be able to be a giver Amen. and be generous, praise God. So, so powerful. And one more thing about folding, I say this, this is really cheesy to fold, but I'm going to say it. See, if you get something and you fold it, Okay, you fold it, okay? So once you fold something, say you fold a piece of paper like this, this is just a little visual trick for you to remember. You fold it like this, okay? Guess what this is in here, okay? This is the increase. Oh. Increase, because it's the crease, <laughs> but it's inside. That's the increase. When you fold something, you get the increase, praise God. Increase, hallelujah. Come hey, we on, love you. Rich. Thank you, Defara, for being on today. We've had such a great program oh, of you being on. Make sure you check out Pastor Defara. Every Sunday morning, if you can't sleep in America, then check out Faith Hill's service live because it's on faithhillchurch.co.za. You can find them on YouTube. You can find them on Z our A. website. Z -A, Z -A, Z -A, Z -A, not Z, Z. I've been a long time. Z -A, praise God. And um, you can find them on our website. If you go to our website, teradiz.com, click church, you'll find Faith Hill Church right there. They're a great church. You can watch their services online. You'll be so blessed by Pastor Tafara's teaching. He's a phenomenal teacher, and I believe he's an apostle to the continent of Africa, doing amazing things. He has favor in the government, in the marketplace, in churches, all over, praise God. He is awesome. So check him out. Check out his ministry. They're doing a great job. Thank you, Tafara, for being on Oh, thanks today. for having What a me. blessing. Thanks, everyone, oh, for joining us. I'm going to try and be back um, hopefully next uh, week. Tuesday, same time, I'll do another Supernatural Business Live, and you can ask, I'll answer, carry on answering your questions for those that I didn't get to this time. We love you so much. Uh, underground, hang on, we'll just, I'll just spend another couple of minutes of Underground, but, you, but Facebook, I'm going to say goodbye. So goodbye, Facebook. Facebook, love you, goodbye. And then YouTube, we're going, there's the website right there, they put the link on there, look, faithfulchurch.co.za, right. so that's you. So um, we're going to, let me put it, never delete. There we are, post now. So uh, we love you, YouTube. Bless you. Remember to press the thumbs up. Remember that we've only got 20 thumbs. Come on, let's hit some thumbs up. If you haven't pressed thumbs up yet on, 
on YouTube. Go to the top, press that thumb, and let's see if we can get some more thumbs before we sign off here. So we've got 20 right now. I think we can get more thumbs up than that. And also press subscribe. There are 24. Come bam, on. I knew it. Drawing. I knew it, great, yes. come on. 26. Seven, 26, come on, we love let's it. Go. So that's it, bam, push the thumbs up. 30, 30. bam, <laughs> any advance on 30, any advance on 30. Hey, we love you, YouTube. We'll see you next time, bless you. Remember to share this, like and subscribe and share 32. all that stuff. 32, there they go, the thumbs will keep going up. We yes, love sir. you, bless you.